Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today on the table I've got one of the Armageddon Steel Legion, which are a mechanized infantry force within the Astra Militarum, and probably one of the most well-known regiments there are. When these guys were first released back in the year 2000, those gas masks and short capes very quickly became a fan favorite, and that distinctive look has been replicated in a lot of places. Now, you might notice, the eagle-eyed amongst you, that this is not one of the actual Citadel Steel Legion. This fella here actually comes from Anvil Industries, who are a resin company who produce a sort of different range of guard-compatible, let's say, <laughs> pieces. Um, and, you know, you can use them to either spice up an existing Imperial Guard army you've got, or to start with something entirely new. Now... In the interest of disclosure, the last time I did a video on working with resin, I used these very same pizzas. Now, it's worth bringing up, I say this just because I don't want this to be thought of as paid promotion. Um, this is off my own initiative. These guys are really cool. Okay, The parts that I'm going to use are fantastic. The fellas are a lovely team, and they make absolutely astounding pieces. So I'll link that down there, Anvil Industries. Do go and check them out. If you're interested in starting your own uh, Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard Army, it's worth having a look, especially if you're looking into these Steel Legion guys. Now, whether you're using these resin parts or if you're going to go with the original metal uh, Citadel range for the Steel Legion, the painting methods are going to be much the same. So that's why I just quickly bring that up and we'll have a look at each of the differences as we come to them. So, first off, let's get a look at the different paints we're going to use. Now this little intro section might be a little longer than some of the other videos we've done because there have been two complete changes of the paint range since the Steel Legion were released in 2000. So, <laughs> we've got to talk alternatives. Now once we've gone ahead and blasted our guy with a base coat of Zandri Dust Spray, I'm going to go ahead and do his jacket in Zemisi Desert. This is a nice yellowy tone. And it works really well as a base coat for that Steel Legion yellow that we want to sort of try and emulate. Now over the top of that, you've got two choices, and I want to bring that up briefly. The Metal Steel Legion don't really have as much detail on them as this fella that I'm going to use today. They're a little bit older, and they have some fairly sort of chunky uh, raised areas like along the backs of their sleeves and along the edges of their jackets. So what I will do for this model is to highlight them with Ushabti Bone, because that's probably how I do the metal guys. It is worth pointing out, though, you could just grab your Tyrant's skull and dry brush over the top of the Zemisi Desert in the same way as I have in this simple Astra Militarum video over here. The end result will be fairly similar, but I want to try and replicate that nice straight-edged effect that the old Steel Legion have. So I'm going to edge them with a Shabti Bone. Over the top of the jacket, we're going to use Seraphim Sepia. It's got a nice sort of yellowy tone to it, and it's not going to darken it down as much as Agrax Earthshade would. Then with the jacket out of the way, we're going to move on to all the rest of the colors that we got going. Mechanicus Standard Grey will be his trousers. Lead Belcher for any of the metal details, obviously. Dryad Bark will be any of the leather, so his boots and equipment, his gloves and what have you. Then I've got my Vallejo Black. The rifles, uh, the casings on the Steel Legion carbines, black. There isn't really a lot of other black on them. And that brings me to this next color I've got here. Now in the original Codex Armageddon, the Steel Legion are not presented as having black helmets. They've actually got a mix. They use a little bit of green in black, and they make a very dark, dingy sort of green. Now, you could do that yourself, mixing, for example, Castellan green into Abaddon black, and, you know, mix that up as you need it. But I've got here a Vallejo color. This is military green. It's a nice, deep green shade. It's very dark. And when we go ahead and hit that with a Nolan Oil wash, it's going to look perfect for what we want. Okay, it's going to look that just off green. But that's what I'm going to use for that. I'm not going to bother mixing. As you guys know me, anywhere that I can avoid it, <laughs> I will find a paint that already exists. So military green is what we're going to use for his helmet. Non oil over all of these colors. And then we'll quickly block in the lenses on his helmet with McCrag blue. Now on the um, Steel Legion themselves, they've got a single piece lens, like a, a visor. Again, for these fellas, we've got to improvise a little bit based on how the miniature is actually made. So this will just go into his eye sockets. So first things first, I've just got a large base brush 
some zamisi desert, and we're just bucketing this over the whole jacket. You do not need to be careful with this at all because every single other piece of this miniature we're going to end up painting. So if you go over his gun, his equipment, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that nice mid-tone yellow we've got for the jacket. So cruise around now. You might find with the Zemisi, sorry, with the Zandri dust base coat that you don't need a second coat of the Zemisi desert. But once it's dry, you can be the judge of that. Now, once that's dry, I've got my medium layer brush and a little Shabti bone. And like I mentioned, you could go ahead and dry brush this stage. Now, I'm going to go for quite blocky highlights because I think that's going to suit the style. Like if you've got the Metal Steel Legion, those more prominent edges are going to look quite cool. So you'll notice I'm being quite bold with these. We have got a wash to go over the top in a minute, and that will help blend these together as well. So you can go as much or as little of this as you like. I'm going to have a little fun now going around just highlighting anywhere there's a prominent edge in his clothing. So again, keep an eye on where you want these highlights to be on your own miniatures, uh, particularly with the old Steel Legion along the back of his, uh, his sleeves and along any edges in his jacket will be quite a good spot to keep an eye out for. Now, whether you've dry brushed or you've, you know, edge highlighted those details you want to accentuate, it's going to be quite a sharp step between those two colors. But don't worry, because we've got Sarah from Sepia here to the rescue. Now with this, you don't want to go crazy with how much you're putting on. Okay, You want a fairly controlled application, because all you're looking to do is get some definition between the highlights and the jacket itself. So as you paint this on, anywhere that you see it pooling, just draw it away with your brush, because all you're looking to do, there we go, that's quite nice, is get that transition of color. It might even be a bit much. But you can experiment with this. Just take your time. And like I said, don't bucket it on. You're just looking to get that transition in color and keep things nice and yellow. So go around and have a bit of a play here. Just getting this onto your model. Now that's gone some way to toning down that extreme highlight we have going and introducing quite some nice shading into the folds of the jacket. Now this works fantastic on the Metal Steel Legion, so just a quick look at how that looks when it's all finished. Nice. If you really wanted to, you could go ahead, grab your shanty bone out again, and do some final really sharp edge highlights along sort of officers' coats and cuffs and what have you, but that's up to you. For these basic troopers, I think that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead now though, we'll get the Mechanicus standard grey out and we'll start painting his trousers. Now you may notice on these models, they've actually got these leg wraps going on. Um, on your actual Steel Legion miniatures, they will have instead just ordinary trousers. Nice and simple though, it's the same premise, just bucket on some grey. And then while that's drying, start from the top of your model, so with the gas mask ordinarily, and start getting your dryad bark on. So gas mask, gloves, any leather equipment, and his boots. You want to get done in this. Now with that dryad bark, finally we can start to see how he's taking shape. Now I'm going to move on to the lead belcher here, because this is how I paint my guys. But you might find that you want to put the black on first. Personally, I like to use the black as sort of a cleanup stage. So you'll see I'm being fairly messy and not giving too much of a <laughs> bother to where this is going. Um, but like I said, your results may vary. So go ahead and either lead belcher or black, whichever you want to start with and then swap to the other for the next stage. And then on to our black. Now I have gone ahead and just sort of silvered in all of the eyes at the moment. And the reason for that is twofold. First off, it's a nice simple base coat for the blue that's gonna go over the top. I don't have to worry too much about the, the base coat showing through for that. But secondly, it's actually gonna help because I've done around the rims of those eye socket things at the same time. So when I come to paint everything else in and then give it a wash, if I make any mistakes, I can very quickly tidy it up with the base coat, like I have here. So let's just fill in his gun now. I think that's the only black thing, really. And then time to fill in his helmet with a little of that military green. Now this will probably look quite bright when it goes on at first, but you're going to need to go over and give this a second thin coat. When it dries, it'll darken down quite a bit. 
Now I'm going to do the same color for the plates on this guy's uh, shins, but the actual Steel Legion, they're not going to have those, so don't worry too much about that. Now while that's drying, we can get in and do the eyes. The easiest way to do this is to paint sort of half of the eye in one direction. If I can do this while I've got the camera in the way. But then flip them upside down. And you can paint the other half of the eye in the other direction. So probably not the easiest way to actually demonstrate. But that might be a little clearer. Oopsie daisy. There you guys can see. So now with all of the base coats done around the jacket, it's time to grab out the Nolan Oil, and we'll start layering this on. Now you want to use a medium layer brush, you don't want to use something too big for this, because you want a fair amount of control. You don't want to go crazy and end up getting this onto the jacket itself, because that'll be a pain in the butt <laughs> to try and repaint. So just go around now, take your time, and make sure you are sort of painting this directly into any of the recesses, and then a quick swipe across any of the broader areas. So all of those areas that we've just gone and base coated, go ahead, non oil. Now, as ever, what a difference a shade makes. Really helps define the edges of everything and it darkens down some of those tones we've used. Now, it's worth pointing out here, it has been 18 years since Codex Armageddon. And in that time, you will have seen most people painting these helmets flat black. So this might still look super green to you. Luckily, there is an easy solution, and that is a second coat of non oil. Da -da -da. Nice and simple. Just go over it again. You might not even want to do this. Like on my guys, I'd quite happily leave it the green that it is at the moment. But to get a deeper, darker green, closer to black, just do on another coat of non oil. Nice and easy. Now, does that look better before or after the second coat of non oil? That's something you'll need to decide. It's really a matter of taste. Um, I quite like it with that slightly more greenish tone, but this works well too, and it's really easy to achieve. It's just a second wash. Now let's get on to our highlights, and there aren't really a lot of these to do because we've already done most of that on the jacket. I've got here my Gawthor Brown, and Gawthor Brown is going to be what we use for all of the leather areas. You don't need to go too far into this. Really just anywhere that you want to accentuate the very edges. So, um, for example, on the fingers. I'm probably not going to do anything with the uh, with the gas mask for this, but just anywhere that I want to accentuate the edges of leather details. Grab your Dawnstone to highlight the trousers, or the leg wraps in the case of this model. And at the same time, I did end up touching in the edges of his gun with a little Dawnstone too. So now I've got my Stormhost Silver, and this is going to be for any of their metal details. And again, this is one of those ones where you can go into as much of this as you like. Um, I prefer to keep my weapons fairly dark, so I'm really just going to stick to the very edges of these areas. As well, don't forget, you can get up onto the gas mask here. Now, on the Metal Steel Legion models, you'll find that they have a little respirator canister on their chest. These guys have this modular setup so that you can pose the heads. But your canisters, you can edge these with a little Stormhost Silver now. That'll look pretty good. Now on his lenses, I've got some Fenrisian Grey, and I'm going to paint a little sort of half crescent shape just in one corner of the, of the lens. So let's see if I can get that, oh dear, with the camera right in the way. Just like that. That's a little bit more <laughs> than I might have wanted to put on. I'll do the other the same now. Now you will find that no doubt much easier to do <laughs> without the camera in your way. So have a little bit of fun with that. Now I've got here my last highlight and I'm going to use this on the helmet. This is German Field Grey from Vallejo. Now if you are painting a lot of these Steel Legion guys or Germans, as the case may be, uh, pick up a pot of this. It's really good stuff. It's got a nice greenish gray sort of tone to it. If you are doing just a handful of these guys, uh, then a little bit of Dawnstone into some Castellan gray will do the same job because I want that slight grayish tone to really make it look like my helmet is a sort of dinged up, battered uh, gray green. 
and that's going to look smashing. So I'm going to go around now, just do the hard edges on all of this uh, helmet. And with that final highlight, our Steel Legion soldier is complete. Now remember guys, if you are painting the actual Metal Steel Legion, your effect is going to look slightly different to this, but the principles are all the same. Start off with the jacket, do those highlights, then give it a wash, and then all of the other details can just be done in Null Noil. And that gives us a really nice contrast between that sort of ochre yellow jacket and the rest of his equipment. So hopefully guys, something there was interesting to you. I'm going to go ahead and base them up now, get some photos. As ever, you can get in touch, drop it a comment in the little box down there below, or you can pop over to my Facebook or Twitter, both of which are linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day.